This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have to cite something before I get started and forget, but some of the ideas that I'm going to share, I read and got inspired on a blog by a fellow named Rick Morley, who's an Episcopal priest at a St. Mark's Church in New Jersey and writes in a blog called The Garden Path. He ends his article with these words, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. And I think that's where I want to start. Because at the heart of it, on this day, as we begin Holy Week, I want us to focus on the idea that Jesus is enough. The people who were in Jerusalem, who were outside of Jerusalem, who witnessed the um, entry into Jerusalem, They were there for a spectacle. They were there for something exciting. And they all had their own ideas about what they expected. And Jesus didn't give it to them. They wanted him to be the one who was going to kick out the Romans. He didn't give that to him. Even when he came in on a donkey, on a colt of a donkey, instead of on a war stallion, They still didn't get it. And they had all of their thoughts. They wanted a spectacle. They saw a spectacle a week later when he was crucified, but it wasn't the spectacle that they expected. So many things that we do, um, we are always expecting more. We're expecting more... uh, like they expected more of Jesus or something different. We often expect more of ourselves. Uh, Back in Jesus' time, from what I understand in all my research, they didn't have Facebook. Uh, But we do now, and I'm sure not everybody here uses it, and some of you probably are always puzzled when it's mentioned. But Facebook is something on the computer where people post Um, witty thoughts about themselves, Uh, sometimes pictures, not always kittens or puppies. And the, the coin of the realm on Facebook are likes. So if somebody posts something and you like it, you can press a button and it says one like. And so everybody wants to get as many likes as they can. And I think this is very much like our lives are. It certainly is like mine. Um, You may not know this, but many who become clergy are people pleasers. And they are folks who really love being liked. So, I mean, nothing just gets us more excited than all the people who sincerely at the back of the church say, oh, I loved your sermon. And I hate to tell them that it was the other person who was preaching today. But (laughs) I'll still take it as a like because... I'm kind of desperate for those things. But with Jesus, we see something different. Jesus came into Jerusalem on a journey that really only he understood. Everybody thought they understood it. They thought they were going to support him. They thought they were going to back him up as long as he went after all the people that he wanted to go after. The Jesus that came into Jerusalem, the Jesus that went to the temple, who was interrogated, who was beaten and tortured, for most of them, that Jesus just wasn't enough. They expected something more. So they dropped Jesus because he wasn't what they expected. Back at the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday, We read from Isaiah, and there's that passage that said, if you really want a fast that means something to God, then do this. Stop pointing the finger, 
lift the yoke of, from the people who are overburdened, stop playing games, don't think because you just give up the right foods, don't think because you just go to church extra that you're doing what I want you to do. Just do the things that you already know. And that will be enough. Throughout Lent, we've been talking about not how do you amp up your spiritual disciplines, how do you do more, but rather, how do you do like Jesus and let your vulnerability, your weakness, the places where you know that God needs to do some work with you, let those stand for you. And just like Jesus, understand that it will be enough. I like to talk about Jesus as somebody who leads with his chin. The people who expected him on a, char, on a stallion, a war stallion, they wanted somebody who was leading with a sword or an axe or in our day, perhaps an assault rifle. Jesus was somebody who led with vulnerability. As it says in the reading today, he offered his back to those who would whip him. He offered his cheek to those who would pull out the beard. He offered himself as he was because he knew that's what God had called him to do. He knew that God had not called him to be a warrior, that God had not called him to be an earthly king and to run things and to sort it out for everybody, but that God called him to be an example, an example of weakness that knows no dependency save the dependency on God. And it was enough. Now, we read in the Passion reading that we just shared, we read that this was not something that Jesus did lightly. It was not something that he did easily. So when I say Jesus is enough, I don't mean that it wasn't difficult. I don't mean that he didn't have questions and he was not puzzled sometimes and maybe sometimes even feeling let down or abandoned. Because I don't know about you, but I have felt all of those things myself. I have felt like I wasn't up to it. I have felt like I wasn't going in the right direction. I was confused. And sometimes I've even felt like I was standing there all alone. The message from Jesus, the message from Isaiah, the message from the Psalms, is that God is there to back Jesus up, and God is there to back us up. God's not backing us up because we came up with a new spiritual discipline that just blows everybody away. God is there to back us up because that is how God cares for us and it's God's nature to always be there and to be supporting us. So as we enter these last days of Lent and into Holy Week, I am very anxious today because um, I don't like ending a sermon without getting to the Easter message because that's the good news that everybody comes to hear. But the message this week is Jesus is enough. Walk with him into Jerusalem. Follow him at every place. See how he responds. And you will find that he's enough for you too. Amen.